ice cream. A fun food. Oreo. A happy food. Would you eat ice cream every day if you could? Yeah. Americans consume more of the cold stuff than any other country, an average of 44 pints per person every year. And though hard to verify, New Englanders are said to top that list. From Brigham's to Hood to Howard Johnson's, New England's icy love affair dates back a century, with one particular trailblazer creating a revolution. Steve Harrell is considered the first to add candy and cookies to the mix in 1973 at his Somerville shop aptly named Steve's, and his innovative slow churn resulted in less ice and more cream, a legacy that lives on at our first stop on this indulgent journey, Harrell's in Northampton. The old way for us is the best way where every batch of ice cream is still made using his original method. The crystals in low overrun ice cream are so small that your tongue doesn't perceive them as crystals. It makes it more rich and more creamy. Harold's mix-ins, now called smushins, still a popular choice here, and his pioneering vision can be found in the kitchen, where ice cream scientists are looking for that next big lick. It's not just me. We have a full staff of experimenters. We have scientists everywhere. <laughs> Is it, are you always hoping for that happy mistake? Oh, we have them all the time. During our visit, Judy Harrell experimented with a new nut-free, dairy-free fudge recipe, despite laying claim to over 400 ice cream flavors. Let's be real, the top selling flavor, vanilla. Always. Herald's is constantly expanding. We have a series of cookies and baked goods. We have no moo, which is non-dairy. We have no moo vegan, and we have gluten-free as well. One of the few places where long lines never really get old. A measured process, pumping out what has been voted the best ice cream in the world. Is anything the best? I don't know. Modest, but Mimi Rancatori and her brother Gus are quick to tie their Tuscanini roots back to their early scooping days with Steve. Both of us worked at Steve's Ice Cream and went from there. In 1981, opening up their own shop, nearly four decades later, the decor, minimal. The ingredients, sophisticated. We like to think of ourselves as sort of in an adult ice cream store. We use really good vanilla, really good chocolate, imported cocoa. The kitchen pumps out thousands of pounds of ice cream every year and countless signature cakes. We make all our cakes from scratch. It has a cake base and then it has ganache, which is uh, chocolate and cream. All of it with a public view. We built this store specifically for the production facility so that people could come and watch people make ice cream. Mimi says their most popular flavor is an explosion of sugary goodness. Our B3, which is brown sugar, brown butter, and brownies. And when short on ideas, they can always rely on those happy mistakes. Burnt caramel. Now, burnt caramel was a signature flavor that was made by accident. We burnt the caramel one day and someone came in and said, no, just make ice cream out of it. Few places today make their ice cream from scratch, but the ice cream barn in Swansea defines your farm-to-table experience. There's a lot of things you can use that are grown locally to make really awesome ice cream, and it happens to be our favorite. Favorite food. Favorite food, yeah. <laughs> In 2012, high school sweethearts Jocelyn and Thomas Cider turned a farmer's market frozen treat push cart into a partnership with Baker Farm and its cows adding to the local dairy. Is this mint? It smells. This is fresh mint, Delicious. yep. Farm fresh add-ins. How important is it for you guys to use these in your ice cream? It makes the best flavor ice cream. We're using stuff that's just grown right here. Whether it be what goes into the ice cream or what comes out of the scoops, colossal serving sizes and art worthy sundaes, the recipe here has earned them the best ice cream in two states, Massachusetts and bordering Rhode Island. We have our formulas down. It took us years to get them down. We know when we add a certain amount of strawberries to it, how we have to offset the amount of water in there with the amount of milk we're putting in. The only thing this couple loves more than the science behind their creations, adding extra blueberries to every scoop to get that right ratio of cream to fruit. My all-time favorite is Cranberry Jubilee. So it's cranberries with sliced almonds and chocolate chunk. 
really good. Is enjoying it. Little ice crystals in it, there's fat, there's air. The fact that it exists the way it does is mind blowing, so I'm very grateful for it. <laughs> just yum. Mm -hmm. All right, well, back to Harold's. Their owner actually shared mm -hmm. an interesting story with us. Two men used to sit outside of their Somerville shop just watching the ice cream being made. Right, so after a couple weeks, he goes out and he goes, what are you guys doing? And they said, well, we want to learn how to make ice cream. So he said, you should probably go to an ice cream school. Their names? Mm. Ben and Jerry. It worked and out for them. And you know the rest of the story. <laughs> yes, it definitely worked out for them just fine. All right, now comes the donut cone. <laughs>